I. How much remains to be unearthed? This year found out the most known memorial to Jews murdered under Third Reich rule, Yad Vashem, was built on the lands of Der Yassin, a village Palestinians called home until they were killed by Jewish paramilitary high on statehood's false promises. Reading so made me remember visiting there as adolescent on the verge. Remember not wanting to wear a hat in the heat. It was blues in whiteness, a flag if I recall right. Remember growing irritated at victimhood's portrayal, tomes of total helplessness hammered into my head, hounded me. Maybe I was overwhelmed at becoming heir to such harrowing history. Maybe I could already hear through omissions in that arid air. Mm -hmm. A few years back, a few young men opened a nightclub outside an old town in fields famed for fat worms, where abandoned factories bend, broken barbed wire rusts, relics of the concentration camp that remains a people's landmark, picture of an era, grounds for paranoia, passed on since the slaughter of more than just six million. The place mostly plays hard drum and bass. Long before it was bought, though, and flipped into the spot, this building housed a tannery where inmates treated skin, stripped off mules and cows and kin. Later it became a needed storage space for confiscated shoes and hair hastily cut from the heads of walking corpses directed into ovens described by guards as showers award the hardest workers. Mm. Its name is the system. And since landing on the outskirts of this village memory Mars, the clubs caused quite a stir. Every weekend evening, youth yearning line up to enter, sink drinks and lab-made chemicals, dance loud until dawn rustles. Some get caught off guard when they leave with the rising sun, step dizzy for a moment lost, the pungent smell of damp dirt, a surprise to nostrils smoked. Miles of barren ground grown gray, revealed when the music cuts. Holocaust survivors and a host of Jewish rights groups are up in arms of fury. They want the joint shut down, say a space that saw such hate should be no hedonist hang. Several organizations organize demonstrations out front of embassy doors. They call for the memory of genocide to be shown respect, if not enshrined. <clears throat> to Jerusalem. And yet, a number of those crying grievance can also be heard asking God to bless the bombs their homeland drops on a people deemed beasts because they dare throw rocks, reject bogus peace talks, in demand of the land their ancestors lost, fed for years, then bled through, so room could be made for a chosen few. Wrapped tight in the Star of David, dozens gather on a daily basis, make a crowded street their stage to fend off global outrage, loudly validate hate the use of American ammo on unarmed Arab civilians, in hands the holy Torah, in hearts a religion turned hollow. There's this story going around that one afternoon a student, branded blasphemous by peers, approached a rabbi, revered the town over, at just such a procession, to point out a passage from the book of Isaiah in which the Almighty, speaking of Jerusalem and its contested temple grounds, firmly tells the prophet, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. 
Kid asks teacher, well, what then's your stance on the plight of our neighbors? Palestinians caught in occupation's jaws. Does your sacred vision of Moshiach's arrival make space for the downfall of iron walls or apartheid laws? Will we rebuild homes bulldozed? Might we open main roads closed? Could we begin to take some blame? Or does the party line remain the same? Whereupon the old man skids into a fit of anger, claiming the boy's been tricked by anti-Semitic media. To simplify the story as such, this elder spokesman states, is to demean Jewish history, rip your roots apart. Besides, he continues, we've suffered so much this century as the focus of fascist rages in those wretched Nazi cages. You better believe it's our right to fight with fire for the little we've managed to finally acquire. Lit, youth, replies, what of lives who've lost everything since this nation state was carved? Is not our continued emphasis on one holocaust's countless horrors a means of deflecting attention from the atrocities we've since committed? Rebbe, we perpetually play a people played, yet checking out this landscape, it's we who's living high. Oppressed for so long, we refuse to see how we've turned oppressor, become the same terror that long kept us tethered. Don't tell me I misrepresent the past when half the people here today still say without flinching, Palestine never existed. Those people's history, nothing but fiction. Don't tell me I stain the legacy of my people just because I claim truth on trails slightly steeper. At this point, the teacher, having heard far too much, decides to catch up with the rest of the march. He scowls on the young man, shoves him aside, and with his first step, echoes a slogan, gone stale, never again, never again, except when we want to, when we catch and kill. Distraught youth grumbles as he turns his back on the mob scene and hears the voices inside his head grieve. This is Israel is not a Zion I am looking for. This is Israel is not a Zion I am fighting for. Three. Now, as far as the owners of the system go, they say business is good. Say this fact speaks for itself, louder than any petition or placard possibly could. And as far as those statesmen of milk and honey go, they've got a White House proudly hosing their soil. They needn't say a word. Some facts speak for themselves, louder than any petition or placard possibly could. Parallels. Can you see them? Parallels. May I name them? Parallels. Could we end them? Come reclaim a spirit of Abraham when he crashed and crushed his father's dusty idolatry. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks.